Hello fellow makeup lover. I am here to do a palette for you. This is a build your own palette for the month of May. Our theme this month is going to be underwater. This collab was started by Kara and Kelly from Beauty and the Frizz and Keep Beauty Real respectively. I'll put their channels below for you if you want to check them out. Their content is much better than mine and they're so much more experienced than me, but they are very sweet and are letting me join in. So yes, this look is from the underwater palette. I know it doesn't look very underwater, but I have reasons, I assure you, for everything I picked. I'm gonna get into some little videos I did of doing these looks. I did a couple of looks with this palette already. I've got those in here for you, and I also have overhead swatches of every single eyeshadow. So this is my medium wardrobing page from Trish McAvoy. I use these every month and then I save them through the year. These are the shades I've gone with. I'm really excited to get into this. So, All right, so the first shade we have, Indiana Love from Sydney Grace. This is from the Unbreakable Bond palette. And I think this for me just really represents the deep water and my life has been feeling a little bit like I'm under deep water lately. So I just really thought that that was a suitable shade so um these are all magnetic they come right out easily out of all sydney grace palettes are this way but they're not labeled so i did label the back of this one and then here is the swatch i did have like a filming moment so we already have that swatch on there yeah i realized that that's sort of messy i'm gonna go ahead and just clean the lines up of this because and again it really seems fitting for me this year because deep water just seems to be what I'm under. And the next shade really ties into that as well. But as we're kind of getting up further in the water, I think things start getting a little bit more green a lot of times. And so this is Delicate Design. And this was from a mystery bag from Sydney Grace for 2022. I love this. And this is from the peach bag, the light peach bag from 2022. I love this shade. It's called Delicate Design. You can see kind of that navy that's in there, the green that is in here as well. And so Delicate Design is this shade that is, this is a favorite to be honest. Just one of those shades that really captured my heart as soon as I saw it. I just don't use it enough, so I'm very excited to use it in this palette. Then the next shade, as things start getting even higher in the water, that I was thinking of is I don't wear very many blue eyeshadows, so... I'm gonna, you're gonna see my palette's gonna be a little bit more green. This is a duo chrome that I love. This is called Love Spend. It's from Pretties for Your Face. This is the shade and it is green. It's a little bit, not aqua, but aqua adjacent. But what I love too is that when it shifts, it just becomes very neutral. If you're not a fan of certain uh, multi-chromes because they don't feel wearable, Lovesbend is a great option for you, I would think. It's a great option for me. It kind of has like some purple in there. That's sort of what happened with it. The next shade that I have is another multi-chrome. This is Ocean View from Sydney Grace. And you can just see that this is metallic and punchy and gorgeous. And it also has that, that purple, the yellow, and I just look at this and I just think this really is an ocean view when the sun's hitting. It's just um, so underwater that light can filter through. And I've got a couple of shades that make me think of that. So then the fifth shade I have 
is out of a palette as well. This is from Viseart. This is the Sola Plage um, palette, and this is the shade C. And I love that palette. I bought it because it was different, and then it's ended up being extremely fun and wearable. And this is probably my only true kind of aqua shade, and you can see it's a bit of a topper, but I thought that that would be fun for this palette. So again, this is the shade C from Sola Plage from Viseart. And then the next one, I always think about how fascinating it is to watch those silverfish swim in a bait ball underwater. I just think it is amazing. It's fascinating even from the, from the shore when you see it. And this shade totally encompasses that for me. This is from Pretties for Your Face. This is a multi-chrome called IEI. And it is silver, blue, and taupe. But the silver is so... I know it's not as silver as some other shades, but this is a silver I'll wear. Like, I think Tiara from Sydney Grace would be more silver. But I'm already going to be in the blue category. So much so that this duochrome, I just thought this is so fun and pretty. And it just makes me think of fish scales. Art is interpretation, isn't it? All right, so this next one is a kind of like a multi-chrome satin. It's called Happy, it's Hidden Treasures, sorry. Hidden Treasures from Sydney Grace. It's kind of a satin, and as soon as I saw this, I was like, that to me is like the light when it's filtering through in the ocean or in water when it's really clear and you're underwater and you look and you see the light peeking through. And that's kind of how I think my world has been um, very deep water and now I'm sort of coming to the surface and I'm seeing that light peeking through as you're about to surface and that part of being underwater is exciting. So again, hidden treasure. And I guess there's a lot of hidden treasure when we're underwater, things that come from that that we benefit from later. If you hear whistling, I have a 12 year old whistling through the house and I don't want to tell them don't live your life because I'm filming. So this next one is called Lemon Cream. It's from Sydney Grace. And I wanted to put in something that was sort of beachy, um, sunny, but not really a true sand shade. And I thought that Lemon Cream was the perfect option for that. And again, that sun as it's filtering through the water or the sand and you can't see it very much because the point of this shade is to have that like brow bone type of a shade. Next, I wanted a transition shade that was a little bit different. Um, I was torn between peaches, pinks, browns, and I just wanted like a crease kind of a shade. This is Milk Caramel. It's from the Viseart Grand, Grand Pro 1X, but it's just a good um, matte kind of caramel shade like it says but I would say it's got that like peachiness to it and I'll bring this across there for you kind of was just a good balancing shade and then finally another shade that I was really excited about is this one and it's called setting sun and it just reminds me of a starfish of the sun on the water and this is that shade, Setting Sun. Another multi-chrome that goes peach, gold, all of that. So it just sort of balances the palette out a little bit. And again, Setting Sun to me also really makes me think of very often just our lives and where we're at, you know, sunsets and sunrises, changes and changes in life. Now let's get this on my eyes and do a quick look.
the next thing I can do that is gonna affect how I see this is brows. I'm finishing off the brow blade from Urban Decay. Do you see that? It's almost gone. This is not something I'd recommend that you buy. The pencil is nice, but the felt is super red toned. If you want it to be more ashy like I do, it gets a little bit harder, so I'm disappointed with this one. I wouldn't repurchase it. I'm going to use it up, but I end up using the felt tip as a brown eyeliner because then the red doesn't bother me so much. But I'm going to toss this as soon as I run out of the regular pencil. I'm not going to keep it for the felt tip. It's not actually an epic eyeliner either. And then my favorite is the Benefit Give Me Brow, shade 4.5. So I have gone through and done concealer and now I had like kind of like a hook of a wing you can still sort of see it decided I didn't love the wing hook and so I am using micellar water and I am cleaning up this look and sort of filling in the outer corner with that navy a little bit more so that it feels more like me and for greater accuracy I'm actually turning the brush this way instead of this way because I want the majority of the application to be on that tip on that outer corner so if you find brushes aren't working for you just play with turning them around different directions and you might find that with your particular eye shape or whatever else some things work better for you a different angle than maybe they do other people I like that actually that looks really cool okay so for the last look I used a neutral base I used the fair base from Gerard cosmetics and so I'm going to use the white base now this is the clean canvas eye base in white which is just a creamy white eye base barely taking any this is way too much because the smallest amount of this goes such a long way oh my word do you hear the the rain we might be even getting some hail. I'm gonna go into that socket a little bit just for blending down here a little bit. Whoa, no wonder my dog was freaking out. This is quite a storm. Again, for eye base, I really like to use a very dense brush and if it has an angle, even better. And thin, thin, thin. I think it's Rose from Rose and Ben that says makeup likes to be in thin, even layers, likes to exist in thin even layers and that is true so if you're having problems with your makeup the first thing to check is if you're using thin even layers this looks really scary i realize that but i wanted this very very white base to start and then i'm going to do um a much more neutral natural look so let's go in same crease brush with that same tan shade and when i was building this palette i was like all i need is one set of kind of base makeup And then after that, I will be able to do everything else with the fun shades. I didn't need multiple crease shades or whatever else. I'm going to just blend this all the way up. And again, on this brush, I like to go straight in and then sweep it back and forth. And do you see how it doesn't work its way up because of the shape of this brush? I personally like that. What I used to do all the time was this first and then a nice fluffy brush to bring the rest of the blend up, which I could still totally do. I'm just gonna make sure that I've got the base shade built up the way that I want. The shape that I would like. I almost always start with my crease. I know some people start with their lid and then they work to their crease, but I like to start here. I know this is not looking great just yet, but what I'm gonna do is take this large rougher brush and now I'm gonna blend. This is such a soft brush and such a nice um, angle. I really like this brush because I feel like I can get into and blend with precision. So it's very much to me a precision blending brush and I just get that very even blend, which is looking um, to me on the monitor more yellow than it really is, but again, I, it's like I'm filming at night, even though I'm not, because the lighting in here is, I've lost it pretty much. I think I'm actually going to try this, Refer 32, as an eyeshadow brush. I know it is an eyeshadow brush, but I haven't typically used it as one. And I'm going to do something different. I'm going to start with my highlight on the inner corner. And I'm going to build 
the depth up. Oh, this is really nice. So that brown, just for, to remind you, is from Viseart. It's Milk Caramel. And then the shade I'm using right now is called Hidden Treasure. I totally feel like that is just the, the light playing on water vibes. Such a fan of that shade. I'm gonna take this pencil brush from BK Beauty, wipe it off on a, on a brush and go in with Hidden Treasure and just do that brow bone. Okay, I like that. Next, we're gonna do the same brush. I'm shocked all of the colors off of this brush. So what I want to do is use this really bright one, which is called Setting Sun. I'm gonna get a clean Refer 21. That's better. Another option would be to take a silicone brush like this. This is really flaky and really fallouty. Ooh, okay, silicone brush it is. Duochromes very often play the best with a silicone applicator, no matter the brand or the texture. I actually have a, that was a weird like flake of duochrome. That's really fun. I don't even think the camera can do this justice. Apply the second eye here for you. My left eye is my weaker eye, so sometimes I have to get in a little closer for the left. Yes, that. That makes me happy all kinds of happy. That is so great. I'm gonna take Milk Caramel now, and I'm gonna do the lower lash line. To me, I'm like, this is wearable. I can wear this to go run the kids around or to the grocery store or whatever, but other people might think this is, um, that the other look was just as wearable. But for me, I'm like, oh yeah, this is wearable. I'm really feeling like I want IEI here. So using the silicone applicator, just using the other side of it, I'm going to use IEI, which is this purpley taupey silver shade. And I don't want to put this. I, I mean, traditionally, like we would go in on the center or the outside, but I think I'm going to take this along the upper lash line and I might take this on the lower lash line. Yes. I'm loving this like purple silver moment for this first two thirds of the lash line. Yes, I'm liking that a lot. In fact, I like it enough that I'm going to take the BK Beauty brush and I'm going to put IEI on that lower lash line as well. And I have so much glitter fallout all over my face right now, and I'm not a fan of that. I think I'm going to leave this here. So let me just clean up, do mascara, and go from there. All right, so we're going to get into some mascara. I'm going to do the Dior Show Maximizer 3D Lash Primer first. I'm going to do my mascara the way that my daughters have been doing theirs. We're going to use the the new Young Gun Way. I've been using a lash curler since the 80s. Always. Never go without my lashes being curled. And I always do, my lashes are short and very straight, so I always have my lashes curled straight up. And my girls are like, no, Mom, you got to do this new way. So the new way is that I do the first coat up, and then I'm going to pull the wing out so that they're all gonna face out and sort of give me a little bit longer eye. I mean, this is not a technique I did not know of, just a technique I didn't use. I'm using the Dior mascara as well, which is fine. The primer is amazing. The mascara isn't as amazing. All right, it does look good all together like that, but I can't believe how much more lashes it looks like I have doing my makeup this way that my girls showed me. So, or pushed me into, I should say. I, I knew it existed. I have done this even on other people, but whatever. 
on me. I never did. For the bottom lashes, I'm just going to take and the um, highly rated Milani tubing mascara, which is to me a total dupe of the Thrive. I know some people say that it is. Some people say it's not, but they both do the same clumpy thing. They're both very wet formulas and neither one are my favorite tubing formula. My absolute favorite tubing form formula is Trish Backaboy. I switched to this lash comb from the kind that I had before, and I think that it's a little bit easier to not stab yourself with it. So if you're looking for a lash comb, this is a good one. Just go with the cheapest one. They're all exactly the same. Mine is from Ulta, and it's the Grande brand. And I wash that when I wash my brushes, just keep it sanitized. And then if I were to get any kind of an eye infection, then I would soak it in maybe some barbicide or something like that, and then wash it again, take the barbicide off. Okay. Brows are looking pretty good, but I think that they need just a little fluffing. I'm really happy with that. So I think that this is a look I would wear a lot, and I know it doesn't make it look like I'm underwater. It's underwater is a lot of things, and this is kind of underwater light and starfish and the palette's underwater but the looks that you get from a palette if you see a palette that's themed mermaid underwater ocean or whatever you can actually very often get something more light and airy like this so that is it for me i'm going to come back and give you my final thoughts but i think that's my last look for today because this is gorgeous and i don't want to take it off so thank you for taking the time to watch all right so here is the palette all together and i had so much fun with this one but it was challenging. It really was to come up with these 10 shades to make a palette that feels cohesive in its theme and its coloring. It just was rough for me. So I think it looks cute the way that I have it arranged in here. I like something really symmetrical, but um, it was fun. I'm really glad that they challenged me to do this with this theme. It really did push that limit for me. So thank you so much for including me, Kara and Kelly. Stay tuned for June and our theme for June, I will go ahead and post in a comment below if you want to participate, but this was a really good time. More swatches and pictures will be up on my Instagram and we'll see you next month. Thanks for taking the time to watch, comment, subscribe, like, whatever you decide to do. Have a great day.